Hey everybody, my name is Jason and I attend our whole venue at Rev and I serve with our student ministry care team. And I'm just really happy to be here with you today. Um, we're gonna talk through some scripture and uh, just reflect on this Easter season. And um, so for me, I'm a, a warrior by nature. I tend to be someone that likes a lot, a lot of predictability and control in my life, as, as we all do. Um, but as I've been reflecting on uh, this Easter week that we're in, um, you know, the current reality that we're all walking through together, uh, it's just been hard to know how to process both of those two things at the same time. Um, so as I've been reading through the gospel accounts of the last few days of Jesus' ministry on earth, um, I just have been really encouraged by what I've been reading. Um, you know, like Jesus, that last day before his crucifixion, he spent um, pretty much the whole day with his the, guy, the guys he was with the whole uh, time that he was in ministry for the last few years. And uh, they celebrated the Passover together. They had a meal together. Um, but he started telling them some things that were a little unsettling and worrisome to them. Um, he was saying things like that he was going to suffer and that um, that he was leaving and he was going away. And, and even worse, where he was going, they couldn't follow. And so, you know, the scripture says that they were all sorrowful. They weren't um, sure how to know what to think about this situation that Jesus was kind of telling them about. And, but uh, Jesus stopped in the middle of that and basically cared for them and taught them uh, about some things that were going to be true um, as a result of this. And so that's, that's where we're at today in John chapter 13 and 14. Um, Jesus says, Children, I am with you a little while longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so now I tell you where I am going, you cannot come. And then in chapter 14, he continues and says, Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If not, I would have told you. I am going away to prepare a place for you. If I go away and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself. So that where I am maybe so that where I am you may be also you know the, the way to where I am going and then Thomas kind of interjects and says uh, but Lord we don't know where you're going how can we know the way and Jesus told him I am the way the truth and the life no one comes to the father except through me if you know me you will also know my father from now on you you do know him and have seen him and he continues on and this is where he just it's just so awesome to read this reassurance and hope that he gives them um, in the midst of all this kind of chaos that they're just being told about. Um, he says in, in verse 15, If you love me, you will keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. He is the spirit of truth. And then in verse 25, he continues and says, I have spoken these things to you while I remain with you, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have told you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Don't let your heart be troubled or fearful. So as I read that, I was just like amazed at um, just thinking about the scene that they were in right then. Uh, Jesus had just told Peter that he was going to deny him three times. Judas had just left for the night to, to begin that uh, betrayal that um, would kind of happen later that evening. And Jesus, meanwhile, he knew what was coming. Like he knew the next day that he was going to face this physical torment that was just going to be unbearable. Uh, but also, and, and worse, he was going to be experiencing, experiencing this spiritual separation from his father. Uh, that they had been perfect union for forever. And now as Jesus took on the sins for all of us, he was going to be separated from his father. So just knowing that that was what was playing out. And in the middle of that, Jesus stopped and he ministered to them, to his, his friends. He gave them hope. He gave them reassurance. He kind of confirmed to them that even though he's going away, that he's going to actually... Uh, give them something that's better, that the Holy Spirit would be with them all the time helping them. And so just knowing that that same 
reassurance is true for us today, uh, was just really uh, amazing to me, um, especially in this situation we're all kind of going through together. Um, so I just wanted to share that with you, and um, I just hope that um, you can set aside the situation and the circumstances that we're all going through and just remember how helpful and um, just how loving God really is, that he loves us perfectly. Um, and we just, we're just so thankful for our church family. We're thankful that we can still lock arms with one another virtually um, and care for one another. And so that's what I'd like to leave you with is in that same uh, chunk of verses in chapter 13, Jesus says to them in verse 34, I give you a new command, love one another just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. So just uh, as we kind of continue to, to process all this this week and reflect on the Easter season, um, just pray that we'd all um, model Jesus' example uh, with each other and that we would, even in the midst of worry and unpredictability and just fear sometimes, that we would love one another and that we would administer to one another and care for one another. So I'm just so thankful for the time this morning. Um, just thankful for our church family and hope to see you back here tomorrow.